Hello, it's Kote again with the practical part of sewing, part two of two of this video. It's about making these masks. Well, now it's about marking and cutting the fabric, a bit of ironing and sewing. So, I first start with cutting the centerpiece in a raksu, it would be called the kagami. It is just a piece of fabric, um, 35 by 17 centimeters. We will fold it in half and then we will iron three folds with 1.3, 1.5 centimeters each into it. The folds are kept within the frame at the sides and will fold up in the middle to give room for your nose. This will be the centerpiece. It's not looking very nice and flat, so I iron it a little. I draw one line with the pencil across it for an even line. I will measure 35 centimeters, which is here, and then 17 should be on this side. That's 17. Is there. Okay, so I start cutting. By the way, if you own scissors for fabric, only cut fabric with it. When you cut only one something else, um, it is possible that they come apart a little and that cutting fabric with it is not as smooth anymore. In by 35 and this is okay. That fabric was a present by Jika. Thank you. <laughs> now for the four frame parts. Two of them are 17 centimeters. That is exactly that by four or five centimeters. And two of them depend on the type of mask we are doing. We will later fold this and we will have either quite small pieces or we will have 19, 90 centimeters long, including the straps for tying behind the back. Cutting the frame parts 90 centimeters by 4 centimeters two times, this will be this total including the tie. The other one is just 17. There is my line and the table is too short so I will divide that 90 in 2 times 45 so I make a mark at 45 and then I do some marks for 2 times 4 centimeters. and I'm having enough fabric. I'm also drawing the next with again 4 and 4 is 8 there and I'm taking 17 centimeters. Of course you can do more than this at one run because you might need more than just one mask because you have to wash it after usage. So, some photos for the PDF. These are that frame piece, this is that frame piece, 
And the other one. The centerpiece is folded in half. Now I will iron the three folds that are to means to form around your nose into this. They should each be around 1.3, 1.5 centimeters deep. 17.5 or something. That is 5, 6, 7, 8.5, 8.7 or so. 6, 7, 8.5 and a little bit. One and a half again, and one and a half again. One and a half, one and a half. I will start with the middle one. Put these marks onto each other. And iron it thoroughly. As you can see easily, I'm not a master in this. So, three folds. I will secure them with pins because it's important that we get them right into the frame. Then I will iron the end parts. I fold them in half while iron it while ironing it. And that one again to the inside. No idea how this will turn out with the long ones. We'll see. I will learn ironing here. So I started with this part. This is not very friendly when I'm not looking at you. I started with this part folded it in half, ironed it, and then folded the halves again to the inside in halves and ironed it. And this is the result. We will put this on here. as it's already here and on this piece well don't attach the, the back side of, of uh, uh, the folds to it completely in there and securing it with a pin that will be the first parts we'll be sewing 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 well you can buy these such lines of fabric that don't fray on the outsides on a roll. You can of course use this. So that would mean you would buy a two or three centimeter uh, frame on a roll if you want so and you just have to fold it in halves. This back stitch that we are using for sewing the Kesa and the small Kesa, the Ruxu. First I have to find the start of this thread somewhere. Cut the 
thread. Don't use too long thread. It will twist and fall on your feet. It will make knots and strange things. Better use not that long. I go in here from somewhere under and pull until the knot and I will stick in a little behind that knot and come up a little before to the left. I will stick in a bit behind to the right and come up a little bit in front to the left. I will stick a little bit behind to the right and come up to the left. Don't pull too much in this or the knot will disappear into the fabric. A little bit behind and come up a little bit left in front. A little bit behind to the right and coming up left in the front. A little bit behind to the right and coming up to the left in the front. You don't want to hear this anymore. A little bit behind and up to the right and to the left. A little bit behind. If you want these sewing lines to be exactly straight and not dancing knots, you can draw a line, a sharp line with a pencil or fabric marker and then sew along that line. So, but for these masks, where you don't see anything because you're normally using the same thread color than the end color you won't see anything so I hope you can see this so this is the line how I would sew there are the points on the front side and there are dashes on the back side this is that stitch out here and I will start with the inside so that our little knot disappears and then I will sew along this inner line because there I'm sure that I get all the layers the inside folded layer that should not fray including um, the centerpiece and they will all be stitched together so I'm going in a little bit behind that knot, um, not sewing through this layer here. Oh, it's windy outside. <clears throat> a little bit behind, I will go in and all the way through and a little bit in front, I will come up. You don't have to do very narrow stitches or so it will be sufficient if it holds somehow. I'll take away the first one because the others hold it. The first few stitches are always looking a bit funny but that is not very much important because the other frame part will sit in front of it. the piece of wire could have been put in there from the beginning or someone later somewhat later I think I should be able to put it in there if your wire is bigger or it's a pipe cleaner or something like this I would put it in before sewing. But this I will in
insert the wire there, put it in the middle and give this already a little bend so it will stay inside. It's much easier getting through these layers of fabric and coming up again with a smaller needle. I really have to use a quite firm grip in order to get it out again. Again we don't have to hide the final knot because the other frame part will come in front of this and no one will see it. Back side, front side. So this is the, the folds show down, here's the wire. It's like the smaller version, just not so easy because it's longer. <laughs> I'm taking this in halves to mark the point where the middle of the mask should be. And I will fasten some intermediate parts here so that it's not falling away again. There is my center mark and around the center mark I will not pin it because there the mask will sit. The stitching on the inside of the frame will have to hold the mask in place and I want to fixate the mask part completely before I fiddle around with those long parts. Coming closer to the end of this, this tie, um, I have to find an end. <laughs> and I fold this here inside Trying this a bit neat. I close this that it will not fray. And this is also what I would do when I would use just the small piece and the shoelace. But there, this here would be the part that sits exactly here. And then further on there would be the shoelace. I have to find an end where the knot does not stick out. So I'm going in there and come up somewhere later. As you see then I shorten the fabric a bit and make a knot. I hope you can see this. I'm making a knot with the help of this needle. So, then I cut it behind the knot and then I drag the knot inside. This is the mask you've seen me sewing. This is 90 centimeters. It is the extension of the vertical frame and it is with this also the tie. Quite a lot of sewing. 90, 90 centimeters is a meter 80 together. Um, if you would do the frame just this little part, of course folding inside for not fraying it out and putting in a shoelace or something, you would have to sew only this part, not this. And it's also better to not behind the head or even use a 
stopper where can, you can press a button and slide it up and down this so it is much easier to wear than making a knot behind your head. However, I like the charm of this that there is just a wire and some fabric and I like the practicability of this. Um, but this is also quite some, some more sewing. However, I think one needs more than one of these masks because you have to wash it after each longer usage every day if you are out. So you can store these when they are infected and dirty in a plastic bag and you can then wash more than one together. Five minutes on a stove cooking or hot washing in the machine is sufficient for, to disinfect it and kill the virus. Um, if a virus is something living well. They both work well. This one form the wire around the nose, bind it above the ear. And below it works good it fits well there are no gaps can breathe really sufficiently through it can see the dots of the backstitch maybe I hope you can see it normally I would have used a thread in the same color than the frame and the ties but here to show it the light one is also nice however thank you for suing I hope to see you and discuss this with you at Tree Leaf in the forums and I'm planning on holding some Fukuden Kais together with you if you want to where we can sue together and other than in the normal Fukuden Kais for Kesa or Raksu suing um, we can talk a bit more and chat about which is done how or maybe um, you bring up another kind of mask and share it or do this if you want to or just want to say that this is all nonsense, I would love to discuss this. However, this is it. Stay safe, wash your hands, bye. Thank you.